Deathbringer here. Order my t-shirt below and let everyone know you play D&D like a badass. How to be every Game Master's favorite player, today on Dungeon Craft. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master, coming to you from beautiful Dungeon University, wearing my plus one tweed jacket of insight. And this channel is about playing the ultimate game of D&D and other tabletop role-playing games. And I'm Deathbringer. Level up your game by subscribing and click the bell icon so you'll be informed when we upload new videos every week. Recently I did a video on the eight most awful toxic players ever, and I wanted to follow up with a video about how to become your Game Master's favorite player. I'm going to give you eight tips to do that today. And this list was compiled by my patrons on the Dungeon Craft Patreon. So in no particular order, here are the top eight things you can do to become your Game Master's favorite player. Number one, come prepared to play. Being prepared means you've got your own dice and pencils and you've updated your character sheet if you're bringing it. Maybe you have your own little player notebook where you take notes. And if you're a spellcaster, you probably want to have a list of spells. That way you know what you're doing when your turn comes. As a game master, I always provide a little notebook for each of my players. But if your game master doesn't think of that, bring your own. Keeping careful notes and recapping at the start of the session lets the Game Master know their storytelling is appreciated and you want more. Two, pay attention and don't interrupt. It takes a lot of concentration for the Game Master to describe all the situations you're in. So when the Game Master is describing, nobody should interrupt. Listen carefully. Try to look at the Game Master. Take notes. Listen for context clues. In my game, if you enter in town, it's a new place, and you enter the inn, and I say, well, the innkeeper says there's a room available. It's one gold piece. By saying he's the innkeeper, I'm indicating he doesn't really know much information. But if I role play it and say, welcome, travelers, to the inn of the welcome wench, I am Gustav Gobblegut, your humble proprietor. By giving him a name, I'm indicating to you that that NPC is probably important and you should be role-playing, so listen for that. Three, be ready when your turn comes. This was universal amongst the Game Masters I polled. If you're in combat, make sure you know what you're going to do, when is your turn, and you don't waste the Game Master and the other player's time, especially if you're a spellcaster. If you're a spellcaster, you should keep your spells on index cards or in a little book and have the casting times and durations and all the information out alphabetized or however you want to organize it so it's ready to go. If you watch Critical Role, you'll notice the spellcasters always know what they want to do and they know the spells actually better than the Game Master, Matt. Be that kind of player that knows exactly what you want to do and all the limitations of your spells before you cast them. Four, be active, not passive. This encompasses a number of behaviors. Roleplay with each other, not just the Game Master. Roleplaying shouldn't be something that happens just if the Game Master is there. If the Game Master leaves the room to get some chips or go to the bathroom, you should continue roleplaying in character. You don't need them. That's another thing you can watch at Critical Role. Matt can be quiet for a very long time as the players roleplay for extended periods. Don't wait for the Game Master to think up adventures. Listen carefully. So if you hear there's a ruined wizard's tower at the edge of the swamp, you could say to the Game Master, hey, next time we'd like to explore that ruined wizard's tower. Or maybe next time we can explore the caverns of carnage. Create backstories that help the Game Master. Instead of creating a backstory that's just interesting to you, Ask how it can help the Game Master. So if you know the Game Master is sending you to the caverns of carnage, you could say, Maybe I have this brother that became an adventurer years ago and they disappeared in the caverns of Carnage. Would that be a cool adventure hook for you? And the Game Master will probably say, yeah, thanks a lot. You're the protagonist, so make sure you protag. If you're playing Call of Cthulhu and the Keeper has described the murder scene and you've exhausted all the possibilities and you've gotten all the clues, Say, my investigator drives over to the police precinct to look up any other missing persons reports for this area. Or I'm going to walk myself over to the library and do some library research and find out if there are any books on reptile cults in this area. Don't ask for the Game Master to give you options of what you can do. Do things and have the Game Master react so it seems like a natural conversation that flows. And finally, don't wait for a consensus. Should we kick open this door? Should we search it for traps? Should we scrape off the paint and send it to a laboratory for testing? Just kick the door in. Players that are too safe and games that are too safe are boring. 
Five, share the spotlight. Being a good role player is great, but it also means sharing the spotlight with everyone at the table, especially those more shy or reticent players. If you have that dominant personality, make sure you bring others into the conversation and draw them into the scene. Ask them what their characters are doing. Listen carefully, react to them so that they know that you are listening. Not only will everyone like you because you're sharing the spotlight, but the game master will appreciate your leadership and serving as an example for the rest of the players. Six, be a good sport. Don't squabble over magic items. I'm a player too, and one of the things I hate is when players, usually this is younger players, they start fighting over who should get what. Magic users, you can't even use that plus one sword or plus one shield. So what are you arguing about it for? Wait till a magic wand shows up and take that and move on. And especially be a good sport if your character dies. Look, there's a reason why we use dice because death can happen. Random stuff happens, characters die. I'm not your enemy. If your character gets injured, it gets hurt, I'm not the villain. I just play them. The dice are the ones that actually kill you. So don't displace your anger and take it out on me. Just roll with it and create a new character. Seven, carry the load. One of my players, Adhesive Tom, paints with me every week and we use those miniatures for the game. So that really helps me out because I don't have to paint them all. You can help your game master by offering to paint miniatures or even making terrain or designing character sheets if you're artistic. Or just come early to set up. You know, we got to get that tablecloth out and the bowls so that we can put the chips in and glasses for everybody and the pencils out. All that kind of stuff. It takes up time, especially if you're playing at the Game Master's house. So going early is much appreciated, as is cleaning up after the session is done. And finally, but probably most importantly, bring some snacks. You don't just bring food for yourself. You bring food for everybody. If you want, pitch in for a pizza. Decide what you're going to get ahead of time and order it and collect all the money so that the delivery is smooth and it doesn't interrupt the Game Master's flow. Uh, this is for uh, Professor DM. It's always important to keep your DM happy at the table. Now you don't have to bring whiskey, but you should bring something. I mean, don't bring like no potato chips or anything for the for the dungeon master. Don't bring a submarine sandwich and just eat it yourself. Make sure you share. Thank you, Mark. That's one way to make sure that you are on my top tier list of players. If you follow these eight tips, I guarantee you will be one of your game masters favorite players. Do you have any more? Did I miss anything? Make sure you note that in the comments below. Also below you'll find links to Dungeon Craft on Facebook and Patreon. Special thanks to all these patrons here who contributed to this episode. And you'll find a link to my module Frankenstein out just in time for Halloween, available exclusively for download at questgivers.com. And as always, you can check out more Dungeon Craft content right over here. May all your rolls be 20. Deathbringer here, you may notice my armor has received a glorious upgrade. Now if only we could do something about the host. Until then, watch more Dungeon Craft.